Hey traders, Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with a late session update. I'm actually going to call it Market on Close. It's three o'clock on Wednesday, January 5th. The uh, FOMC minutes have been out about an hour. Um, I guess there was some language in there about letting the uh, balance sheet come off from its, you know, nine trillion plus. And uh, that was viewed apparently as hawkish and uh, rates have popped a little bit and the market has uh, accelerated to the downside. And what I wanted to do is just update you on the levels. I don't even know if this is gonna make it to you in time for actionable content, but I wanted to give you something uh, late in the day to think about possibly uh, into tonight. I hope it gets to you in time, so let's go through it. Uh, Ten-year yields were up at the highs, 1.7%. You can see that has taken out the local highs here from um, uh, earlier this fall. And you'll recall, I think the high for the cycle was 1.74%, uh, maybe 1.76, but like about six basis points off of uh, the highs for the cycle. So that'll be an important level to watch. I think I've got it marked here. So uh, I will go back in the chart and check that. We had talked about a short on TLT the other day. Uh, that's uh, obviously starting to work. If you are short in that trade, what you're obviously looking for is a break of 143. And then that would open the door to test these prior lows at uh, 141 and that was our that was our uh, technical target on the break of this uh, five dollar uh, trading range five from 146 is 141 uh, we've had a pop in the vix of about 10 percent we were talking about down here at the lows um obviously with the sell-off we're, we're popping up so let's let's look at spy these are live charts so, you know, as we enter the final hour of trading, we could get a bounce here. They could, you know, bury it into the close. Who knows what they might do. But I wanted to give you certain levels and kind of where we're at. This morning, we talked about this 475 being a really critical level. We talked about if that broke, I expected a fast move down to the gap. We got that. If you're on top of it and actively trading, that would be your, um, you know, that would have been your entry. That worked out well. Uh, we, we've we come into the gap, almost closed it. Um, we may by the end of the day or it may, you know, pop up for a little bounce. If you are on the daily time frame, if you're on the daily time frame, all is not lost. Your key level is 470. If you know, you are long on this breakout here. You know, we broke out, spent a lot of time, thought that was a bull flag. That bull flag has been nullified on the break of 475. Now you got to hold 470. If that back test of the breakout didn't hold or doesn't hold, you got to get out. You got to reorient your thinking. You've got to uh, get out of that long position and then see what happens below 470 if we do, in fact, uh, break down. So here we see on the 30 minute chart, looks like this gap is, you know, all but filled. We'll see if the bottom of the gap holds at 471. Like I just said, 470 is going to be a, a really, really important line uh, on the daily chart. A uh, lot of pain, a lot of pain here in the queues. Uh, several nice trades uh, could have been made. You had a definite break here at 392.50. Went right through the 50 EMA here in gold at 390 and a half. Went right through 389. We had all these levels marked. So, you know, whether you were... Uh, getting long or, or, excuse me, getting short or not, that's kind of irrelevant. Uh, I hope you did. There was some 
good money to be made on the downside today in quite a number of names and indexes and fat man names we're going to take a look at. But right here, you can see accelerating to the downside. You've got a level here at 386.50 that could possibly hold. You've got a more important level here at 384 where there was some support, but then you've got the prior lows down here at 379, 379.50, right in that area. I mean, just based on the look of the charts, probably gonna go down there and test that as long as they're selling tech. I don't see why we're gonna get some kind of big rally. You know, we, I'm sure we'll get uh, a bear flag and I would be, I would be set up or mentally oriented to sell those flags, you know, rallies in the resistance or breaks of bear flags. I would be orienting to the downside, especially in tech. And here was, um, here's the 30 minute chart. You can just see these levels breaking. We had talked about this morning that a break of 393.50 was going to target this 389 and a half that played out like a champ and it actually just you know blew right through it so if you had gotten short you know anywhere along here that's uh you know been a gravy train so i hope you were in that i've been really surprised at the weakness in iwm we had talked about the 50 being potential support we said 222 was definitely a level that had to hold. Why? Because this was the trading range, right? And so now, just visually, a break of this $4 trading range, we're all the way down at, you know, 219 and change, just on a measured move basis, a $4 trading range, break of 222, targets uh, 218, and you can see we've got a big level of, uh, volume over price uh, support here at 217. So we'll see if that uh, that uh, uh, supports price right there at that level. And you can see it uh, down here as well. So uh, that was surprising to me. I, I did not expect that. Uh, moving on to Facebook. Uh, things have actually broken down a little bit more even as I'm starting the video we had uh, we said 334 had to hold it did not that was your um, short entry if you were interested in doing that uh, you actually had a second chance on this little one candle rally up into 334 that failed we talked about you know, all these intermediate levels. And we have this level down here at um, uh, 326 that is broken. And now looks like we're heading to this last chance area to save it at 324. After that, you've got a gap down at 321 going down to 318. So it looks like this is uh, making a beeline and uh you know last stand at 324 uh apple uh what i did here was i drew in a trend line on the 60 minute chart off of these lows back in early december you can see we're testing the prior lows here at you know 177.25 something like that we're below the trend line so that's bearish and now you know, if we were to break this area here, 177.25 ish, whatever, uh, going to come down to 176. Not, not a ton of support there, but you do have this volume over price area of support here uh, that extends down towards 173.50, 172.50. I'm just calling that a band of support. But, I mean, when you're below a trend line, it doesn't matter if it's a monthly, a weekly, a daily, an hourly, a five-minute. Once you break a trend line, 
it's a cell signal, right? And then you look for other locations on the chart for reference points. And here, you know, I wouldn't be all excited, uh, just just an ex as a technical example, a trading example. You know, we we broke this trend line. Okay, that's that's a bearish technical event, but you got a lot of support right here uh, at the prior lows. If you're all amped up to get short, get short on the break of the prior low, then you're below trend, you lost key support, and then you're looking for downside targets, and you've got one here towards 176, and then 173.50. Tesla entered the gap. We, I mean, we said that was the key today. We, we tapped it, we tapped it, and then it broke. So now the expectation is to at least come down to this 1075. Why? Because you've got a large volume over price bar right here. I could see it coming down to that level, uh, either bouncing or holding. But if it doesn't, it's going to come right down here and fill all the way down towards 1060. And of course, that's really helping our ARC K short because just of you know all the all the um, the large position size of Tesla in in the ARC K fund. Microsoft. Oh my God. Um, we said be short against three thirty. We had the gap down. You know, you couldn't, unless you were short, great. If you weren't short, you had a chance here at whatever that is, 324.50. And then it's just, you know, it went down. This little ghost bar here was the uh, fake move off of the Fed. So if you weren't in and then all of a sudden you saw that and you got that reach up to 324 Probably would have been scary, but I mean, it was still objective to be short against this 324 and a half. So that, that has been, you know, a, a, a pretty nice trade. I mean, even if you got short 324 and a half, we said that the downside target was a retest of these lows. And that's exactly what we've got. Now I've got a little notation here there's a sizable gap from 315 to 309 so we got to watch that level if this 319 truly breaks so you know into the close today that's going to be a you know a very important location and i wouldn't be surprised we talked about it this morning you know this rolling bear flags that keep breaking you know, we're due for a bear flag. So this would be a perfect place for that to happen. And if you got a kickback rally into 321, 322, you can either wait for that, you know, bear flag to form and then break, or you can short it against, uh, you know, resistance at 322 with a, with a stop just above if that's what you want to do. Uh, Amazon. Wow. You know, we talked about this uh, low side of the box here at 33.15. And, you know, we're down at 3300. 3, Not saying they can't save it here. They, they can do anything they want. But the objective trade is to be short against the bottom of the box. And from our... Uh, TA 101, you're looking for $125 of downside because that is the width of the box. So, you know, kind of see how it goes into the close, but that's definitely your line of reference here at 33.15. Looking pretty bearish. Google, what a trade. Holy moly. Uh, you can thank Liz Warren for this one. She is going after Google 
at least with rhetoric about, you know, whatever, whatever consumer, whatever she's, she's got a heart on about. She was spouting off today, sent, sent the CEO a letter and all that stuff. So we had a reach up here, but regardless, we talked about the levels and the levels we talked about were 2870. If you had it alarmed and you got short, you got a gravy train. Congratulations. That's a big money trade. I mean, going from 2870 down to, oh, really, 2770. That's 100 bucks right off the bat. Straight through all these levels, regardless if you had any of them alarmed. And that's a good, that's a good, um, a good lesson, a good lesson for, for myself. Cause I didn't catch it. Um, you know, you say to yourself, oh, I'm not really a Google guy, which I'm not. I don't trade a lot of it, but if you don't have an, al if you don't have levels alarmed, you never know. So you're going along and you say, oh man, it just lost $50 in two hours and you didn't even know it. Well, if you would have had it alarmed, you would have known it. And you can say, oh, I don't want it or I'm getting short. But either way, you knew about it. And knowledge is power. I'd much rather turn down a potential trade with my eyes wide open then, you know, to be flipping through charts and find something that I didn't even know about because I was too lazy to set myself an alarm. So if that's you, make changes now. It's January 5th. You don't want to make the same mistakes in June. So start marking levels. And even if you're not a Google guy, when that level or alarm goes off, you can make a decision eyes wide open and, uh, you know, potentially take that trade. But uh, here we are testing the prior low at 27, just call it 27.90. Got to recapture that level. Otherwise, it remains uh, vulnerable. Netflix. Uh, jumping over to the daily chart, we talked about the 200 here. Uh, it broke and now uh, price uh, I would imagine it's going to come down here and test this $90 range. And that's a that's one of those situations where uh, even if you didn't trade any of this, you get a re-entry back into a $90 range, then your target becomes the bottom of that range. So that's a you know, a $90 potential downside. So if this, you know, if this whole thing starts rolling downhill, which it already is, if, if you break into that range, that gives you a very objective level to shoot against. If you're not short already on the break of the 200, which we discussed this morning, uh, SMH, we discussed this morning. Uh, you want to focus on 312.50 and that turned out to be an awesome trade. Um, we talked about, you know, getting above 312.50 and then losing it from above. That was your short entry. We had a, a lot of weakness on the open. They bought it up and then drove it higher. And then it rolled over and lost that big level at 312.50. And then we said, uh, look for uh, 308 as a target. We obviously got that and more. So, I mean, from 312 to, I mean, let's just call it 305, even lower, 304. You know, you're talking uh, $8 in a matter of hours. That was, a, that was an awesome, awesome trade. Now, uh, for the rest of the day, uh, just think about it. Where's your resistance? Well, the resistance is going to be all this right here. So you get a kickback rally into 308. That's your objective short, right? 
We've gone from buying dips uh, to selling rips. So you get a bear market or a, a bear flag rally into resistance at 308. Just like we just talked about, you can either try to short against 308 or wait for the bear flag to break. Uh, and then you can get short and then look for a break of uh, this level here at um, uh, 305.50 and then ultimately to take out the prior low and then that will be rolling downhill towards this um, uh, 302.50. And just looking at it, I need to do some more work on, on these levels. They don't look exactly right. They're close, but not, not perfect. But be that as it may, I think anything below 308 is heading lower. If, if you get a recapture of 308, then great. Maybe get a rally. But uh, as it stands now, 308 is going to be uh, big resistance. And here's affirmed. We talked about that. Uh, yes, we had a gap down, but then we had a reach up to 85. And that was your uh, short entry anywhere along the way. I expect this to fill down to 70. That was a nice setup and uh, it's working so far. Uh, Arc F, gravy train. Break of 39. We talked about that this morning. Hope you're short. I am looking for lower, lower prices. Arc G broke. Hope you got short. Arc K, our Tesla proxy short broke 90. Hope you're short. Going lower. Arc W broke 115. Hope you're short. Going lower. Ponzi's bubbles, they're all popping all over the place. Um, what I did across the space is um, um, basically put a half position on across all four. So I'm short all four against the lines that I showed you this morning. Uh, half position in each. So in essence, I've got, you know, position wise, two shorts. I don't want to, you know, go crazy and and do, you know, full positions in arc. I, I just didn't feel comfortable doing that. Um, so in aggregate, I've got uh, two positions. And then in XBI, I shot you a note this morning uh, to alarm 108. I did that. So I got short the January 105 puts. So I have those and uh, looking for lower prices. Uh, the dud of the day was uh, XME. Uh, I bought that breakout. It's it's backed off. Uh, I'll see how that does. Um, I didn't want to, uh, you know, back out of it immediately. Obviously, it was a bad, bad trade. Um, underwater on it. I haven't looked exactly, you know, what I'm down. So... Um, if you're in that, just respect whatever stop that you had. Um, I'm bullish resources. I'm bullish uh, resources, metals and mining, all that kind of stuff. Copper, bullish, but you got to respect your stops. And if you get stopped out, even on these ARC trade, you know, anything, uh, respect whatever stop you had, even if it's frustrating, even if you got to get in the next day. So do that. Um, but I'm really pleased with the opportunities that we had in, um, you know, across the ARC space, you know, across Fat Man, across, um, you know, the Tesla proxy, you know, affirmed. All that stuff uh, worked great without a lot of uh, head fakes and, and frustration. So right now, I think it's important just to drive home, reorient yourself. There's a there's a hole in the bottom of the 
liquidity pool and that kind of stuff is starting to have an effect at least now on the market and um i mean honestly speaking you know the apples and 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 a lot of those names are near the highs so if they really go after those stocks they're 40 you know 40 percent of the queues and a significant part of the market so you don't want to be sitting there even though i realize that everybody's been trained to buy the dip buy the dip buy the dip because it's worked for 10 years you got to respect the levels and the levels are breaking now you start reclaiming them fine we can we can toggle bullish at any point along the way but we're coming into some really critical levels on the daily chart so we've got to keep those in mind and you know once we drop down below like the 470 on spy then we're really on the wrong side of the chart because that breakout and back test did not hold and then you're in a bearish scenario so um i hope the little recap uh is helpful and we'll be back at it uh tomorrow bright and early so i hope the levels helped i hope you made a lot of money today there were some really nice trades there to be had hope you uh were able to capture those and uh, at the very least mitigated damage on your pnl if you were uh, or have been long or still have a bunch of longs taking advantage of these intraday rug pulls can really uh, uh, stem any major damage that you had to your PL. So I hope that was the case. Um, if you're new here, thank you so much for listening. Hit the alarm bell, subscribe, hit the post notification so you get no notified of new content. Jump over in the show notes and uh, you'll find a link there where you can drop your email in and join the team. We'd love to have you. You'll get an invite to the trading room uh, where you'll join a cast of characters that are all working hard to become better traders. We help each other out. Uh, we celebrate the good times and lift each other up when we're having bad days. And that's what community is all about. And we'd love to have you. Uh, and of course, longtime listeners, I really appreciate your support and uh, for sticking with me. I'll keep working hard to give you the right levels and uh, coach you the best I can to help you have better, more objective, and more profitable trades. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.